If you want to pass your SISM, I can help. My name's Sean and for the last 20 years with NEMSTAR, I've been a master trainer. We've helped thousands of delegates just like you to achieve this exam. These, these are my exam techniques, things that are going to help you get your SISM exam. It's not enough simply to know the Asaka SISM exam outline. For you to pass the exam, not only do you have to know the knowledge, you have to understand the exam techniques. And boy, do they have some crackers on Asaka exams. We're going to take a look at some of those techniques that you can use with your knowledge to help you get that pass. In each of these, we'll look at a different problem. And the first problem, the old classic on an Asaka exam, four right answers or four wrong answers. You see, you normally assume in a multiple choice exam that there'll be one right and three wrong. You will almost never get that on an Asaka exam. You're going to get at least two right answers on nearly every single question. You might even get three or four right answers. You have to pick the best. Or, even more difficult, they'll give you four wrong answers and you need to pick the least incorrect. When you're dealing with a question like that, it's not just about your knowledge. It's about your exam technique. And that's what these sessions are all about. Exam techniques. Three rules we're going to cover on this session will be Number one, strategic alignment. Number two, PDCA. And number three, learn the facts. This is a COBIT based ex exam. COBIT, control objectives for IT, is all about value creation, not protectionism. It's not about the number of controls you implement. It's about the value you create in the business. Number one, always pick business value always pick strategic alignment. Number two, another classic Exaka. Something that isn't even advertised on the syllabus coming up in your exam questions. Plan, do, check, act, the basics of program management. If you're getting a question and you think there's four right answers, which phase are you in? How you at the planning phase, the doing phase, the checking phase, or the acting phase? I find this to be a really useful tool when I get four right or four wrong answers. And finally, learn the fact, the obvious one. Sometimes exam techniques by themselves are no good. Sometimes you simply have to learn it. Let's look at one sample question covering each of these techniques. Question number one, a typical Isaka SISM question. An internal control audit has revealed a control deficiency related to a legacy system where the compensating control no longer appears to be effective. Which of the following would best help the information security manager determine the security requirements to resolve the control deficiency? First question you have to do is even ask, What's this about? Sometimes the answers help. Risk assessments, gap analysis, cost benefit analysis, and business case. Four really good answers. If you have a control deficiency, then a risk assessment is a really good thing to do. Risk assessments, that would be a powerful thing to do. Gap analysis, really good to help you select the right controls. That's a good answer. Cost benefit analysis, brilliant. Looking at the cost and the benefit, an essential way to create value. And business case. All of them are brilliant things to do if you have a control deficiency. Which one of our three techniques 
is this? Is it about value creation? Is it plan, do, check, act? Or is it learn the fact? This one? This one to me is... Which one did you pick? Because I'm going to pick plan, do, check, act. I'm going to pick which phase am I in. Look, they're all correct, but business case is P for planning. Risk assessment, P for planning, and C for checking. Gap analysis, definitely C for checking. Cost-benefit analysis, that's what happens before you do it. The IT team selects the right control based on the project requirements and the project budget. That's when you do your cost-benefit analysis. So which stage is this question? Well, this is about audit. And the reason why I get that this is plan, do, check, act is because audit is checking. Because it's checking, D's out. Because it's checking, C's out. We're left with two things, risk assessment and gap analysis. Risk assessment is here to do one thing and one thing only. Risk assessment is in here to find the weakness. If you want to find the weakness, that's what a risk assessment does. To work out where the gap is, what you need to do about it, that's a gap analysis. Gap analysis is helping you to resolve the control deficiency. It's the audit is part of check. If you do plan, do, check, act, only two of them are part of checking, risk assessments and risk analysis. Risk assessment was have to be done first because it has revealed. How did you reveal this? How did you reveal it? You revealed it because you did a risk assessment. If the question say what would reveal the risk, it would be a risk assessment. If the question says what do you do about it? Gap analysis. Exam techniques. Okay, that was one exam technique. Plan, do, check, act. Let's do another one. Question two. In an organization with effective IT risk management, the primary reason to establish KRIs, key risk indicators, is to provide information about or provide information to remediate risk. Yep, that's definitely correct. Demonstrate the alignment of risk management efforts. Definitely correct. Map potential risk to key organizational strategic activities. Really important. Identify triggers that exceed risk. We've got three right answers. All of them are part of risk management. All of them, to a certain extent, are correct. This one, no tricks, no great exam technique. Sometimes you just have to know definitions. This is a learn the fact question. All of them are good for risk, but your question is very specific. Your question is KRIs. Do you know the definition of a key risk indicator because the very definition is a trigger. A key risk indicator is a certain metric that has a good chance of identifying when a potential risk has changed. It's an early warning system. Management get notified if we hit a KRI. A KRI is a tripwire. It's a baseline. It's a trigger value. If you have a key risk indicator, it should be a metric or a combination of metrics that is likely to show you something is about to happen. Sometimes exam techniques simply won't help you. Sometimes you need to know the definitions of the words. Two 
Two questions down, one last one left on this little session. Four right answers. Question number three. Which of the following would be the most important to consider when implementing security settings for a new system? Well, results from internal external auditors. Well, audit reports are really important, that's right. Government regulations from related penalties, the law and compliance from GRC, governance, risk and compliance, really important. Business objectives and related IT risks, absolutely. Industry best practices like ISO 27000, NIST 853, PCI DSS, really important. We are yet again in three right answers. Okay. Which one are you going to do this time? Well, this time I think it's about strategic alignment and value creation. You see, which of the following would be most important to consider when implementing security settings? Security settings do not protect. That's not what we say. You think they protect systems? We say no. That's not actually what we do. Our job is to do more than simply protect. Our job is to create value by using balanced risk. Our job is to create value, not to protect. IT people, Stop saying that your job's there to deploy controls. COVID disagrees with you. Your senior leadership disagrees with you. The job is to balance risk with business opportunity. And business opportunity always comes first. There's one jumping out of me. This to me is an easy question because there's only one important thing. business objectives. It's strategic alignment. The business is always right. Our job is to protect the system, but that's a secondary responsibility. Like every employee, our job is to make this organizational profitable. It's to make a return on our investment. It's to keep our stakeholders and shareholders happy. Strategic alignment. Always pick strategy, don't pick the control. So there you have it. Three techniques that you can use with the SISM hard question type, four right answers. One of the most difficult types of question that you're going to get on your SISM exam. Use strategic achievement, plan, do, check, act, and learn the facts. If this little session's helping you pass your SISM, maybe you could follow us on our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss the other two installations in our SISM exam. You're not doing SISM? Well then contact us, let us know what you want next on our YouTube channel. My name's Sean, I'm the Master Trainer here with Nemstar. I hope you enjoyed our short video and good luck with that SISM exam.